Hello, my friends. I haven't talked to you in a while. <clears throat> and uh, I just saw the strangest thing. I mean, I haven't been on uh, Facebook in a bit, uh, like a, I don't know, a long time. But, uh, you know, we put TV shows on, stuff like that. But but uh, I've, been, I've been here in the Lance Lab, like, you know, just like mad scientists. And I don't want to show you what my room looks like here. But uh, I've been, you know, I'm working on this book. I've written like 400 pages. It's really, it's only a 100-page book. But I keep on, you know, it's, it's, um, it's as though, um, let's just say this. I really feel that the Lord has given a download, and I'm feeling as though America's turning a corner. Now, Now the results, you know, the, the things that are happening right now, I believe have been, and I mean this not to be misunderstood, but I believe that the Lord has been sending these, um, they're judgments. I mean, there's no way that you could not look at the the um, virus coming out of the, the, the Wuhan lab and creeping across the world and hitting the number one economy and, and formidable adversary to the Chinese Communist Party with its dragon spirit over it. And, and so the, the American Eagle now has just been hit with this economic um, paralysis that gutted all of Trump's gains. But then on top of that, you have the economy of $30 trillion uh, you know, in debt right now. And, and, and even though we're watching the, the miracle of like walking on water uh, in terms of like Trump in office and the recovery coming back, man, those Democrats, just, I'm going to put it out there. They want to keep this thing shut down. And uh, when I say God's judgment, I'm saying, then you got the, the eight minutes of, of George Floyd. And you're going to find out. I mean, eventually everybody finds out that all these things are hysterically politicized and they're just, they, there's like a match on kerosene and dry wood. Poof, and everybody, everybody's backing up. And, and, you know, then you find out more information and more information and more information. And you find out, wait a second, this, maybe this wasn't a race issue ever. Maybe this was a totally different issue. And um, not to say that, you know, the, uh, that, that, that uh, there isn't, police problems, but the response and the analysis was completely a rush to judgment. But I'm telling you, this like God saying, boom, there's the virus You've got there, boom, there's all your economy, 7 million are unemployed, boom. Then uh, there's uh, George Floyd and the riots and Antifa and the statues coming down, you know, it goes on way after the riots are over, you got just anarchy. And the Democrats are still you know, holding out of the schools. You know why? Because they'll put 27 million Americans out of work by election time. And so they don't care. They're, just, they're, they're crazy. And any people that are not seeing this, the Christians that don't see this, well, let's move that subject aside for a moment. Now, and I'm going back to like, so the Lord, uh, why, why are you doing this? Because I know the Lord put Donald Trump in as an intervention. I mean, that was the, that's my whole shtick on, you know, why I went from like seven mountains to Cyrus Trump, because I knew we had to make that turn. But now I'm saying, Lord, we got in there, but you, you don't, why, why would we let this start to happen now? I thought, I mean, I just, but then I'm beginning to realize, I'm beginning to realize that it's, it is everything that I've been saying. And, and we've been talking about this. You guys catching this? We've been talking about this after Cyrus, after Cyrus comes in, and Cyrus himself was a, was a, uh, um, was, Trump was an actual miracle. And this was the part I want to cover in the book that I, just briefly, is I got graphs, pictures that show you the little dot of red in the ocean of votes. In other words, how, how a remnant shifted Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. And who knows how it's going to happen now with mail-in ballots and the election fraud, I mean, ding, 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 ding. But I'm, I'm saying that as I'm praying, I'm going, so I saw the Lord move supernaturally to put Trump in, and I could give you a list of what he's done. And you, you know that if you're, if you're not, and, and of course, the problem is, he, as he's done what he's done, the left has gone, veered off into a deeper, almost like, I would say this, this is going to drive some leftists crazy. But you know what? Not every person is anointed, obviously. But you know, when God does put an anointing on someone, Donald Trump, like the Bible says, Cyrus, my anointed. Thus says the Lord of Cyrus, whom I've anointed. Secular guy, God anointed. If God does anoint someone and you hit, touch not my anointed, the Bible says, it creates a backlash. You know, the backlash for people that come against the anointed is increased levels of delirium. So, you know, the Bible talks about 
that those that deceive and being deceived themselves and that deceivers and seducers shall wax worse and worse in the last days. So it's going to be an increasing mental madness in, in culture, but it accelerates if you're hitting what, what God has anointed and because of the boomerang is, it's like, you know, so, so you've got an increasing craziness going on with people that hate Trump. It's, 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 it's an irrational hatred. And so I'm looking at all this and saying, Surely, Lord, this is not blessing. As a matter of fact, it looks to me like the poll numbers, the data. This is uh, this is this is. Um, are, are you are you starting to judge early? And then I looked at the Bible. See, because I had, and this is why I'm writing this book because I I had to immerse myself in this. And it's like the Lord says, it's like Rick Joyner told me once. You don't listen to your own message. It's very humbling when you're prophetic and you're not listen. People, you're not listening to your own message. And, uh, and I, I looked and I said, after Cyrus came in. Haggai is the next chapter. What happens? Haggai the prophet comes down because there was a remnant of Christians, like the remnant basically called sage cons. There's, it's 10% of the American population. They're not enough to win, uh, to put a candidate over the top in terms of like put a candidate in, but, they, but if they don't show up, the right candidate will lose. Those sage cons, spiritually active, governmentally engaged conservatives. Uh, many of you are these people. And, uh, and, and so, boom, there, by the way, there's 377,777 that are on my page right now. I thought that was kind of a crazy number. Three, seven, 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 seven. That's why I wanted to do this broadcast, because I thought, perfect timing. So anyway, the, the, the Haggai thing, why don't you catch this? So Haggai is the prophet. He comes to speak to the remnant because a remnant gets a word from Cyrus. Cyrus delivers a decree. It's the Spirit of God that comes on him. Well, what happened was Daniel happened to have been in Cyrus's administration. Did you know that? The prophet Daniel, he was an old man. He'll die probably in a couple of years after Cyrus is in office, but he's probably 80 something years old, but he's, he's in office. And according to historians, he shows Cyrus that he was prophesied by Isaiah a hundred years before he was born. And they have the text, you know, and, and the, so they had the original, and, and, and Daniel had credibility, so he's showing the translation into the, um, you know, into the king's language, and the king is reading that his name is mentioned, and that God said that he was anointed for the sake of his people Israel, and he's trusting Daniel. Daniel was, a, was the, one of the top three administrators of his entire kingdom. He just basically, you know, hired the, uh, the other king after he killed him. He said, I'll take your staff. You guys seem to be good. So the, uh, here's Daniel, he presents to him the prophecy, which has his name in it. Cyrus makes a decree. Your people will go back and build, build your temple, build your, your temple with your religion. So the God of the Jews, go build your temple. So they take off and they go down to Jerusalem and they're back in their land, 49,000 of them. Now catch this, because this is it. This is where we're at. And they lay a foundation, and then they stop. And they all start building their business, building their ministry, building their uh, nest egg, and just going back to business as usual. They didn't build what God told them to build. They just laid the foundation of what God told them to lay. And uh, I remember a word from Chuck Pierce, which, which kind of bothered me. He probably regrets ever doing it because most people miss, you know, he prophesies a lot with prophets. They prophesy a lot. I catch the random ones that I, I think God wants me to hear. And I got this one. And he said that like the dung around the tree, dung this year and dung another year. And if not, after that, cut it down. And he said three years. That's what the body of Christ is. Three years with, in which to uh, have the fruit of righteousness in America. And if in the fourth year we don't have that fruit, um, then everything that Trump did and those four years will be uprooted. Well, I had no doubt, I had no doubt that the first thing uh, President Kamala Harris will do as president, if she's running with Biden and Biden turns the reins over to her, or if it's Susan Rice, rice a -roni. and uh, but first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna, because they're, they've already been vetted by Obama, Soros, Eric Holder, you know, Axelrod, you know, I can tell you who the guys are. They already vetted who the VP is supposed to be because that VP is working for them. They're going to restore Obama's legacy. They're going to, you know, which is going to be wonderful watching that happen. So if that happens, 
than every executive order. I'm writing down to the Johnson Amendment, which, you know, they're going to start going, you Christians, because they're already shutting down Christians. They're shutting down churches. They're, they're illegally doing it. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Haggai goes to prophesy to Zerubbabel and those guys because they only did the foundation. And that war with Chuck, uh, you know, three years, I mean, it's just hanging out there because I don't think we did establish righteousness in those three. Do you? Do you think that really the country's looking like we've had righteous fruit? I don't think so. So, uh, but, I, but I, I, at the same time, here's my hope. And I, I'm telling you something. I feel hope right now. And I haven't felt it. That's why I didn't want to broadcast because I, I don't like to, uh, I like to be totally honest with people. I just say what I'm thinking, as you know. And, and as I was digging into what I'm writing, the Lord says that Haggai delivered the word. The reason why you have economic reversal, the reason why the wheels are coming off of everything you touch right now as a nation is because you're all seeking what you want to do and you're not doing what I sent you here to do. God gave us a window of grace and mercy with Donald Trump in order to build a house for the nation. And we didn't do that. Churches were building their barns for the harvest. Barns for the harvest, barns for revival, barns for the outpouring, barns for Pentecost outpouring. And what a shallow, selfish, and uh, and and um, and, and uh, a, a focus lacking in discernment. Because what God was saying is, you guys got 36 to 48 months to move while you got this guy at the gate holding back the, the you know the orcs, and uh, you know you better you better do something. And so we didn't do anything. But here's what happened. What happened was. When the governors started shutting down the churches, something started changing. And, when, and what happened was the pastors started to become awakened. The apostolic pastors, you see what God wanted was for them to build the house. You catching this? Please catch this. God did not put Donald Trump into the White House so that we could have two terms of Donald Trump and two terms of Mike Pence. That's what I heard a prophet say. Uh, no. God uh, gave us a break with Donald Trump in order for the church to have, um, to have the opportunity of a reformation in the land, but we never did it. And boy, look how vicious and violent and organized. I mean, my God, look at Black Lives Matter. It's got their, 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 their logo right in the middle of basketball courts and, you know, baseball pitcher mounds and and who knew that they were actually, you know, pro-lesbian, Marxist, anti-family um, organizations? I mean, my gosh, I didn't know that until the, the news came out. And it's like, how in the world did they get uh, $2.5 billion and shake down all those corporations and, 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 and be so powerful and have like a, you know, 80 chapters in other nations going around the world? Well, this is, um, this is like reverse apostolic. This is what the church has an anointing to do. Remember, you've got the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We have that. But I'll tell you something. We weren't building a house for the nation. The Lord spoke to me this week. He said, what kind of house were they building? The house of God for Jerusalem. The Lord said, it was my house for the nation. My house for the nation. So ding, 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 ding. The, my, my, my brain lit up. And I said, you gave us a pause with Donald Trump so that the apostolic prophetic church could rise up to recover ground and build a covering, a house for the nation. You guys catch that? Now, I'm heading out to California. I'm heading out to California. I want to see you there. I want to see you there. Meet me in Pasadena. How about that? You guys want to meet me in Pasadena? I want to read you something. I'm excited about this. I just ran. I just bumped into this today. And it was, um, it's, uh, yeah. So apparently governor, government bureaucrats governing the Golden State are not done with their attacks on the Constitution. I'm reading a, a lawyer sent me a letter on faithful believers. Now a California prayer ministry has been told to cease and desist. When Governor Newsom first issued his draconian shutdown orders, local Democratic leaders like Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti he was more than happy to act as Newsom's henchman. Listen to this one. Do you guys remember this one? It was March 18th. I don't know if you caught this one. Mayor Garcetti announced that he was deputizing city bureaucrats to enforce stay-at-home orders, including sending the newly minted deputies house to house to ensure compliance. 
And he also threatened to turn off water and utilities to any business that doesn't comply with the governor's orders. We're going to be deputizing people to go house to house. But then, then in Chicago, it was even worse. They had an intercessory prayer ministry. They had taxi. The spirits are now manifesting against the church in territorial capacity. If they get in there in November, it will be a national persecution. So the, uh, in, in Chicago, they gave the order that uh, the, uh, they were eager to enforce uh, something against a prayer ministry. Uh, and just like our case in Chicago, California officials are taking breathtaking measures to shutter and silence houses of worship. Um, but in California, they included home Bible studies and fellowships and singing. No, no singing, no chanting, no proclamations. Uh, and, and, and because you can't sing, and, and, and only like, what, 25% of the people can be in a church, and, and, and the maximum is 100 at any point in time, unless you're protesting. If you're protesting, well, that's another story, perhaps several thousand people, nice together, we can join together in unity. And so you might recall that in the Chicago case, officials slapped the client that uh, Matt Staver here has with summary abatement. You know what that means? That means they could bulldoze the building if you didn't comply. If you met, they could bulldoze your church. You guys hear this stuff? And so they, 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 they got an, you know, some kind of an injunction against that. Newsom favors Marxist protests and riots over the church, but will not remain, we will not remain silent. Remember, Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail. So now we come to Pastor Cheon, because I'm going out to Pasadena to Pastor Cheon's church and Pastor Cheon of Harvest Rock in Pasadena. I got, I just, and I ran into something he said today, and I wanted to share it with you. And it says, he wrote this, you know, he's such a statesman, it's so gracious. I'll show you a picture of him. From, uh, from early March of this year, Harvest Rock Church and the HIM Network, it's the Harvest International Ministries, it's a nice acronym, HIM, uh, strictly adhered to the original state guidelines. First, we closed the doors for several months and later, we utilized above standard safety protocols during in-person services. And, and the church, recognizing congregants as a unified family rather than customers or clients uh, who've been deemed, uh, uh, of those businesses who have been deemed essential, has maintained throughout the last six months the importance of keeping congregants and the community safe. We've been doing that. Safety which was the original publicized goal of the government mandates in California, has always been both the goal and the supportive action of Harvest Rock and our church. Recently in California, however, uh, here we go. The house is coming alive. The house is coming alive. This is what I'm saying. Haggai said when the, that you're not building my house. And then I'll tell you what I really believe that means. The church wasn't getting involved with politics. The church, I don't believe, Lance. I think you've gone over the edge. I think you've gone too far. Well, Lance, you know, he's a little off on Trump, right? So um, the church didn't want to get involved with politics. So guess what? Politics got involved with the church. Oh, boy. So recently in California, state leaders have consistently argued for it, and Cheon's talking, and encouraged protesters of social justice initiatives to both congregate and chant. You ever hear their chants? Not very creative. Often while using slogans that are degrading, defamatory, and sometimes even outright violent. No doubt about it. Now's the time for courage. Now's the time for your voice to be brought to the forefront. Stated Governor Newsom. Now's the time for the church to be silent. Don't sing, don't chant, don't even have a Bible study. Now for you protesters, on the other hand, now's the time for your courage. We need you out there with your voice brought to the forefront. Protesters have the right not to be harassed. Protesters have the right to protest. Well, guess what? You're messing with the protestant movement. I mean, listen, man, we got people, we got, we got martyrs, and we got wild reformers. John Knox, Martin Luther, Wycliffe. I mean, we're talking, woo! The governor neither reminded protesters of the current orders in place affecting citizens, Chase says, nor diligently addressed protesters regarding the necessity to social distance where thousands of them were gathered. Soon thereafter, Governor Newsom enacted the latest order with, which criminalizes the worship of God. Governor Gruesome has criminalized the worship of God. 
both in the house and in private residences. He's criminalized worshiping God in your house. Well, that'll certainly stir up the house, don't you think? You know, there's a sleeping giant out there called the church. This is the perfect way to wake it up. You want to pray for that great awakening? I don't want another revival great awakening. I don't want to see people falling down. It's, I don't think it's going to look like that at all. I think the next great awakening is going to be wild. And I think it's going to happen just like this. God's waking up the house. The prophetic Haggai moment is coming and God's saying, hey, look, you want to know how come you're such a mess? Because I told you to build something for the nation. You didn't build it. You're all seeking your own thing. Well, then something came after the church and now it's like, what the heck? The church is waking up. It's the awakening. A rude awakening, but it's happening. Now, the egregious wrong and set of double standards, Pastor Che of Harvest Rock and Harvest Rock International Ministry to advocate for the First Amendment rights and the equal treatment of all citizens by initiating this federal complaint. So now he has a federal complaint. He says, the church has been essential for 2,000 years. That's his argument. We're not, you know, the church has been essential for 2,000 years. And uh, so it's the, the church has been forever been and will continue to be the place of healing for the people, a place of salvation, a place of strength, a place of love, a place of guidance, a place of ultimate unity. And so uh, my, uh, I'm going to be going out there. So here's what I want you to see. Hold on. I'm taking you over here for a second. Let me see if I can do this right. This is uh, professional camera work at its best. There's Tucker. All right, so uh, we're going to be, uh, hold it. Uno momento, por favor. Uh, okay, so check this out. So there's an online and in-person thing, and I'm going to be, I, I, have to, I can only get out there Saturday. I'm sorry. But you know, I'd like to be out there early because look who's there. Look who's here. Guess who's coming to dinner. There's that handsome, isn't he a handsome um, Asian fellow? Korean, actually. And then uh, Cindy Jacobs. And then Eric Metaxas. I miss Eric. And then there's Lance Wall now. Before I got involved with Trump. How do I know? My hair isn't gray. Okay. Then we got, there's a handsome cat. If I ever saw him. Ed's Eduardo Solvoso and Bill Johnson. So Bill Johnson, this is quite a conference, people. This is quite, this is, I'm telling you something. That's a wild uh, group of people right there. When's it going to be? It's going to be August, uh, well, August, uh, whatever it is. It's this week. Let me go back up here. I'll tell you what it is. It's these these times, August 5th through the 8th. All right, now people say, all right, how much is it? Well, somebody's going to have to pay for this thing because they got to reimburse me for my airfare. So here we go. So, so what I want you to see is you can go online for the whole week. You know, bless the church. I mean, my gosh. Look at this, NPR radio, the stupid NPR is getting $30 million from Pelosi to tell you not to send your kids to a tutor because it's privilege. And so you can do 120 for general admission all week long. This isn't for me, so don't, don't blame me if I'm advertising it. Live stream, 55, watch the whole thing. But join me on Saturday. I don't know, they, they got me down for $45. Okay, so, so that's what I want you to, $45. So $45. Come on down there Saturday. How about that? You guys going to join me? Are you going to come? And, and I'll tell you what. If you, if you come out there Saturday, I'll, uh, I'll do something. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> I, you know what I want to do? I, I want to pre... I wanna, wait, wait till this book comes out. It, because it's prophetic. You talk about the prophetical. So, God, I now have hope. I know it's less than like 80 days, 90 days. It's just such a cliff. It's such a nail biter. But if the church, actually apostolic church, wakes up, see the foundation. They, all they have is a foundation. You know what the foundation is? And I know the evangelicals aren't going to like this. I got a lot of evangelical people I work with. But it's like, you know, it's like the foundation is apostles and prophets. Foundations, apostles and prophets. But that's all they got. They don't have a house built. So what good is it? We have to start to get, we have to start to recognize, and by the way, a lot of people are, are, are apostolic and don't know it, but this is the other part of the thing. Once they got the, the, uh, the house up, they built the house for the nation. We need a church for the nation. We need, there's, we need a church for the nation. We need a whole new 
echelon of reformers and revivalists that are going to rise up. It's going to happen too. But what happened after that? After they built the house, Nehemiah comes right behind him. You want to see the walls and the gates of influence, the walls of the country protected. You want to see the walls of America so that, so that we don't go down then we have to be a sovereign nation. By the way, the beast from the east is rising. The global economy is going to go through a reset because everybody's going to go through this, this reset. And you see what's happened in the Middle East? Already, there's that, you know, that, that's been tapped down. You notice that there hasn't been any, any uh, wild attacks in the United States. You're not seeing terrorism. You know why? Because you know, Trump's the last guy that, you know, anybody really, I mean, they, they, everybody, that might be in suicidal, suicide bombers all the time, but, but in terms of like a, a state-sponsored anything, they'll do it with Obama. They'll do it with Democrats, uh, you know, here and there. Well, it all depends. Um, yeah, I'd say that, the, yeah, that's right, because Obama was helping Iran get money for a nuclear weapon. So he was the wrong guy, actually, to, um, you know, to, uh, to be defending the borders. But uh, with Trump, they don't want to mess. They just, you, it's like the Cyrus anointing is he undoes the belt of his adversaries. That's what Isaiah 45 says. Nobody really wants to play chicken with Trump and because uh, they think he's crazy, which is exactly, you want a little bit of that. You want your enemy going, I don't know, it seems kind of crazy. So here's the deal, Lucille. The spirit of the Lord is raising up right now the house of God apostolically in the country. And that apostolic anointing that's in the country right now, I believe, is building a house for the nation. And uh, because there's a house for the nation, there's a Nehemiah phase coming behind it. Now, this depends on the, uh, on the awakening of the church. I'm not looking for the awakening elsewhere, but I believe that a reversal can happen, that a reverse can happen right now, that we're gonna, we can see a reversal happen. And let me tell you something, it's gonna be warfare either way, but at least it's warfare holding the Alamo versus having it overrun by Santa Ana. So we're gonna hold that position. And, uh, and I believe that it's God's wanting to hold. But I'll tell you what, the Lord has made it very clear. You know, because America, let's face it, if, if the United States doesn't have that Reformation influence, do you realize how much we're exporting our craziness? I'm sorry to say it, but America that was given as a gift to the world for liberty, freedom, and for, and for a model of um, opportunity and prosperity as an alternative to, to, the, to the corruption of other systems or Marxism or totalitarian communist control, uh, if, if America is going to just become a, a toxic exhaust pipe into the rest of the world with all of our, our, our gender craziness and our, our liberations, and uh, I mean, look at, would you want America to have that kind of influence? It's like, you know, it's like, no, unless America, which is Basically, not what you're seeing with the extremists. The extremists are at the gates, at the New York Times, at CNN. You see, this is what we were talking about for the last 10 years, at the gates of influence. Somebody will go up there and take control of the church, apostolic, prophetic, awakened church, call it what you will. If we don't start to move into those areas of culture, and I'm talking about small groups that are working like covert and overt, just like the left does. We go in there, except we're there to bring heaven. We're, we're there to bring them. And by the way, Final thought, and then I want you to share this. Would you share this with your, your friends? Just put the word out there so that they could hear this message. Don't be ashamed of deliverance because I'm telling you something. The Lord, the Lord showed me something. Well, you know, we, people say that too glibly. Let's just put it this way. I was uh, meeting with a group of young millennials um, hmm, 24 months ago. And, and uh, they started to go into deliverance. There was starting to be a move of God, which was, well, it was, it really was, because they were getting set free from curses and demons and suicide. And, and uh, kind of like um, they, they were battling with, with, with the pornography stuff. And there was just like demons were coming out of it. And I wasn't trying to do it. It was, just, it was just a sovereign move where they were getting delivered. And there was like a revival story. Uh, much to my embarrassment, I hate to say this, but... It was like I was watching this during a conference I had, and uh, I, I looked around the room. I realized I didn't have the, enough workers to be able to handle the fire that was happening there. And so I just um, I kind of made an executive decision to shift the focus, what we were doing, and kind of focus on just ministering to a couple of people in a side room. 
and to assess what it was that was happening. So I wanted to make sure that it was the Lord showing up and not some kind of a other thing. And well, here's what I learned. I learned that when, when fire falls, um, you want to keep the fire burning and you don't want to put it out to examine it later. And so we had that move that happened and I kind of like corralled it down to step back and meet with my team and go, wow, this is, is this, what's going on? Something's happening here. But uh, I tucked it away in the back of my mind and my heart because I realized something. When you're seeing all the anger and the rage, because the millennials have been lied to, they've been lied to, they've been indoctrinated by, by doctrines of demons and false prophets and false teachers and false apostles that are in the secular system have screwed with their, our kids' heads. So uh, in the mercy of God come down for the harvest. May Jesus be given the dew of the youth. May they not live their whole life in the bondage of a deception that came from the enemy. I pray for the anointing, uh, the harvest to come upon a millennial generation. What I'm saying to you is this, please hear me. When they get a hold of getting set free by the power of Jesus, and they see the raw, authentic, I mean, you know, I don't think we're gonna win them by the power of, you know, causing them to question whether global warming is actually accurate. Or fossil fuels, let's talk about that. Um, no, I don't think that's going to be the, the lightning rod that's going to change, that's going to bring a harvest. But I do believe when the gospel is preached, and remember when there's deliverance, there's healing, because Jesus, somehow there's some sicknesses and maladies that are related to demonic infrastructure. So the woman was bent over, you know, Jesus said it was Satan that bent her over. He didn't say it was, you know, rheumatoid arthritis. So in that, her case, it was a, de a demon. So when he, she got delivered, she could stand up. I think when they see deliverance and they experience deliverance and the miracles start to flow in the deliverance realm, I think they're going to be the most raw, real generation of deliverance uh, kids in the world. Now, I know this is going to be a weird message, and I'm sorry. I'm putting it out there now because I'm not backing down because it's the gospel. We back down from so many things that we've let America get taken over. <clears throat> so my confidence in the Lord is that he's restoring his house, which is his church, which is the body of Christ, to a place where it's a house for the nation. And uh, I'm looking over my shoulder because I got a map of the world here. And I believe, as I'm, as I'm praying, that the Lord is, is, that there's one more, you know, it's like when I used to be in the world, as we say. When I was, remember, I used to, you remember ever been, been in bars? Any of you guys hang in bars? I was a business guy late at night, you know, in the bar. And they always go, last call. And I, I was really telling them, I said, it's like 2 a.m. They walk around at 2 a.m. I was, well, I was doing Back in my single years, by the way, I married over 34 years, so it was a while ago. But uh, last call, and then they go through, and that basically meant it was your last drink. I look at the map, and I and I get I hear the Lord say last call. But there's a harvest of the nations, and I think the message on what America has price we paid by not doing this earlier, it's got to get into these other nations because these other nations. <sighs> There are Christians there too, right? And so we have influenced, we've exported a lot of good, but our mistakes got exported also. So we have to, we have to set that right. And there's a global harvest, and there's a global church, a global apostolic prophetic harvest church, and we must see a house for the nation. All right, well, that's my message for tonight. By the way, I'll put a link in here. I, I will put a link in as soon as I get done, because it's going to be lancewalnut.com forward slash C-H-E. I forgot to put it in there. It's lancewallnow.com forward slash CHE. And that's going to be because you'll join me here in Pasadena. Come on Saturday. Come on out on Saturday. We'll have a little meeting. We'll have a little get-together, a little soiree, so to speak. And I look forward to seeing you there. Beautiful Pasadena, the beautiful Ambassador Auditorium. One of the finest. Celine Dion sang there. Frank Sinatra sang there. And I'll be crooning some of your favorite hits there on that platform at the Ambassador that's an auditorium. All right. And we'll talk some more about the, the, the what the Lord is saying because it's the prophetic is there. It's right now. The Cyrus, the Hega, the Nehemiah. Okay. Share this with your friends and I'll be talking to you soon. And by the way, leave, leave some comments here. Let me know. Uh, what are you thinking? What's, what's on your mind and uh, what's happening? God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, would you let me know? Just click like over here. And if you want to be notified about future broadcasts, then just click subscribe.